Painting a valley background is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it. Hey, hello, wonderful people! It's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. Just a quick note before we start, in this video I'm going to be drawing in an app called Procreate which is on the iPad, but you can follow along with any digital art software of your choice because we're not going to use any fancy features, it's really just about, you know, the drawing itself. That being said, if you are following in Procreate and if you want to have my illustration in the top corner as a reference like this, the way to do it is going in the wrench icon menu here, in the canvas submenu, activating the reference toggle, which is going to let you import an image. And to download my illustration, along with the color palette that we're going to use in this video, just check out the description below, they will both be linked in there and they are totally free. Now here you can use any kind of canvas size of your choice, any ratio, you could go landscape or portrait. I'm proceed just going with the size of the iPad screen because this is a demo, but make sure you find dimensions that work for your own project requirements. Now if you're not exactly sure how to pick a canvas size, I have a video in which I give you all the information you need to make your decision, so I will link that video in the description below as well. Now once you have the canvas, we're just going to start with a very rough sketch of the placement of everything. So go ahead and create a new layer and rename this layer to Sketch. For the sketch, you can use any color of your choice. I like to sketch with just a neutral gray, but we're not going to see in the final result, so just pick whatever you're comfortable with. And in terms of brushes here in this video, you have a bunch of options because again, just like it is not about a specific software, it is not about a specific brush. So I'm going to try to suggest a few different things either free brushes from Procreate or alternatives for a different software. I'm also going to suggest brushes from my Ultimate Inking Bundle. Now these brushes are not essential at all, but I, I quite like them so I want to showcase how you could use them if you do have the bundle. If you want to check it out, it will also be linked in the description below and there's a special promo code with the YouTube people. That being said again, it's really not essential. As long as you have a brush that you know you like, that's pretty much all you need. Especially for the sketch because, again, we're not going to see the sketch in the final result, you can use any brush of your choice. If you're working with free Procreate brushes, you can go in the sketching pack, so brushes that come with Procreate, and pick the HB pencil. If you're working in a different software, either just a brush that you know you like and you're comfortable with, or something that has pencil in the name could be a good alternative. Now, If you're working with my inking, stippling, and texture bundle, going in the inking pack and picking the bonus sketching brush. So we're just going to start by zooming out so we can see the entire canvas and then we're going to map out the horizon line. And to decide where to put your horizon line, the one question you need to ask yourself is do you want to see more of the sky or more of the ground? Now in my case, I do want to see some of the ground because I want to have a little bit of a river running through my valley, but I also want to see a lot of the sky because I want to have the mountains. So I'm going to put my horizon line slightly lower than the middle, just kind of like this. And at this stage, it's all about deciding what you want to be in your valley. Now, I want to have a river, but you could have a little bit of a cabin or a big forest. That's totally up to you. So go ahead and map that out so that we can then build the mountains around that element, no matter what it is. And at this stage, we're really just doing a super rough sketch, so it's okay if you're really messy right now. So once you have your element, we're going to start building the valley around it. So for that, we're just going to map out big mountains. And you can go with any kind of shape of mountain you want. If you want to have more like big hills, like older mountains, the top are going to be a bit more round. Here I'm going for a pretty intense ridge with a lot of angles. So it's going to look a little bit more like triangles at the top, but that is something you can customize. And the kind of mountain you use is a sign of where your piece is going to be. So if you have more round hilly mountain, that might be a little bit more like where I'm from in, in eastern Canada, the mountains are older, which means the top have eroded more, they're rounder and they're more like big, big hills. But if you go in the western part of Canada, like BC, or if you go down in like Montana in the States, the mountains are much newer or younger, I should say, so the tops are super, super spiky. So with just the mountain shape, which is, you know, very easy to to change and to tweak, you can totally change where your landscape is. So that's always something to keep in mind. And if you're not exactly sure if you should have round or pointy mountains, just Google where you want your landscape to be and see what kind of mountains are there in the pictures. 
The idea here, as you might notice, is to have multiple layers of mountain to show depth. So here I kind of have three big peaks on the left side, one big on the right, and then a mountain range in the back. It could obviously be different for you. You get to pick where you put your mountains, but make sure you have a few different layers, I guess, so that we can play with the depth when we start adding the colors. And speaking of depth, to really emphasize the depth in this piece, we might want to add a promontory in the front, where if you wanted, you could go ahead and add a character later on. This video is not about the character, it's about the background, but just drawing some sort of a big kind of rock overlooking the valley is a really good way of showing that depth even more. So just sketching something in the foreground itself is a good idea. And that's pretty much all we need in terms of the sketch, just a rough idea of where everything is going to be. So take all the time you need to either move the mountains that you have, add more, take out some, just kind of play with everything. And once you're happy with your rough sketch, we're going to move on to the colors. Great, so here we're going to start with the sky, which is also going to be the water because water usually is a reflection of the sky. So we're just going to do that all in one go. And for that, we're going to just create a new layer. We're going to put it below the sketch and we're going to rename it to, we're just going to rename it to sky, but just know that's also where you're going to have your water. And the color you pick for your sky really depends on the time of day you want your piece to be in. I'm going with kind of an early morning with the sun on top of the mountains and this gradient in the sky. So if you want that as well in the color palette, just go ahead and pick uh, this blue right here at the top, which as you can see is pretty much middle of the way in terms of both saturation and brightness. Then you're just going to drop that onto your layer to fill it in. And by doing that, you might notice that it's a bit difficult to see your sketch. So to remedy that, we're going to apply the sketch as a blending mode so that the color of the lines of the sketch adapt to whatever is underneath. So if you're working in Procreate to access the blending mode, just tap on the little N next to the check mark and we're going to use uh, multiply, which is at the top of the list. Now, if you're using a different software, blending modes are usually in the same location as the opacity, so you should be able to find that pretty easily. Then we're going to go back to the sky layer and we're going to add any kind of gradient you want in your sky. So again, I'm going with an early morning, so we can imagine the sun might be kind of here in my example. So I'm going to add this really bright yellow kind of orange color towards the middle. And for that, we're going to switch to a hard kind of brush. So if you're working with free Procreate brushes, you could go ahead and pick in the airbrushing pack that comes with Procreate again, the hard brush. If you're working in different software, any kind of round brush that doesn't have any feathering or gradient or texture to it is your way to go. So the most basic brush usually. If you do have my inking, stippling and texture pack in the inking pack still, you could pick either the base round brush here, the bonus one, or the ultra smooth tracing. I'm gonna go with the ultra smooth tracing. And so here, just go ahead and make the brush really, really big and paint where you want the light to be, making sure that it also overlaps with where the river is so that the river has this kind of light reflection too. And from there, we're just going to blend it so it's not as crazy. So for that, we're going to use any kind of blur option you have in your software. Most software do have something called Gaussian Blur. In Procreate, it is in the adjustment panel here. And you can see it's just right here, Gaussian Blur. And then you can just swipe your finger towards the right or the left to take away or add blur depending on the effect that you want. Great, so now that we have the sky, we can map out the mountains and we're going to draw all of them on separate layers, starting with the ones in the far back and then coming back towards the front. So go ahead and create a new layer and rename it to Mountains 1. Now to showcase depth, we're also going to change the color between the different mountain ranges. So the further away a mountain range is, or any element that is, is in the piece, the lighter and the less saturated it is going to be. So the less intense the color is going to be. So for these mountains in the back, we're going to use a super light kind of grayish blue in the color palette. It is this one right here. As you can see, it's quite bright and really, really desaturated. It's almost pure gray. And then all you have to do is map out the top of the mountain range. Then draw your horizon line and then fill in the gap to create your mountain shape. So we're just going to repeat these steps on separate layers for all the different mountains, making the color more intense and darker as we go forward. So go ahead and create a new layer. This one we're going to rename it to Mountains 
two. And if you're working in the color palette, as you can see, we're just going to go through these colors as we go forward. Otherwise, just pick your base color and every time make it a little bit darker and a little bit more saturated. But again, if you're working with the color palette, for now, Mountains 2 is going to be this one right here. We're going to repeat, so new layers, Mountains 3, slightly darker color. And the closer we get towards the front, the more details we want the mountain shape to be. So in the back, it was really, really broad, but since we're getting closer, we're going to be able to see more details. So you might want to just decrease the size of your brush a little bit. The exact size doesn't really matter. That's totally up to you. That depends on a bunch of things like which brush you're using, the canvas size you're working with, as well as just your personal preference. But just making sure you're able to add more details as you go, essentially, is what I'm trying to say here. So once more, this time is going to be Mountain 4. Even dark color, which we're now in this section, the other side in the color palette. Otherwise, you can see it's dramatically darker and quite a bit more saturated than what we've been doing so far. Now, if like me, this mountain range, Mountain 4, is the closest one to you, at this point, we also want to include the, the bottom part of the valley. So like before, we're going to outline the mountain itself. But we're also going to include the bottom of the valley, so making sure that if you have a river, you outline it so that we can still kind of see through this, uh, this mountain range to see the sky color behind. So yeah, just outlining the river, then outlining the mountains as we did before, and filling those in so you have the mountain and the valley and you're going to see the river through. And finally, we're going to draw the promontory. And so far we've been working in blue because usually mountains are far away kind of have a bluish tint to them but this promontory is really close to us so you might want to showcase the color of the rock or the color of dirt so as you can see from the color palette it's right here it is a super super dark brown instead of a super super dark blue otherwise exact same thing just go ahead outline the shape and then fill it in Great, so honestly we've done most of the work by now because all we have left to do is go back in, add some lights on the mountains, maybe a few trees and some grass, but otherwise it's pretty much done. So essentially we're just going to work to add some effects to make this piece look better, but if you go ahead and hide your sketch, at this point you should have all the main elements mapped out. So while we're working with this kind of hard non-textured brush, we're going to just add a few clouds and we're going to do that on a couple layers. So we're going to have clouds in the sky really far away in the background and then clouds between some of the mountains themselves. So go ahead and create a new layer right above your sky and behind all the mountains and we're going to rename this layer to clouds one. And for these clouds, we're going to use the same color we use for the bottom part of gradient of the sky. So in my case, again, since it was early morning, I'm going with kind of a bright yellow orange. But otherwise, just pick whatever other color you use. So if you were going with a sunset, you might want to use a kind of more of a pink than a yellow. It's really all about experimentation and just playing with different colors. So if you're not exactly sure which color to go for, at any point, feel free to Google or look up on Pinterest, um, you know, like sunset or sunrise or a snowstorm and look at what color the light is and then go with that color for your clouds, the light effect we're going to do later, as well as the gradient in the background. And here you can draw any shape of cloud you want. I'm personally drawing these kind of stretchy, swirly clouds and I'm drawing them in a curve. I just feel like it makes the piece look a little bit whimsical and I really quite like that. So that's what I'm going to do. And for now it's going to look a little bit crazy, but once we're done mapping them out, we're going to play with blending modes so that they blend with the sky a little bit better, because right now they're a little bit insane looking. I, I'll give that to you.
And once you have your clouds, feel free to just scroll through the blending mode list and see if there's one that you like. I personally know I'm going to go with overlay, but you can just kind of scroll and see if there's something or some effect that you vibe with better and works better with your piece. And once you find something that you like, feel free to also play with the opacity to see if you would like more intense clouds or slightly more subdued clouds. So in my case, I'm going to lower the opacity quite a lot, probably around 30%, and I'm going to use overlay. But again, feel free to experiment and do whatever you feel is best. We're also going to add clouds between some of the mountains. You could add them wherever you want, between any mountain range you want. I'm going to add mine between mountain two and mountain three. So just creating a new layer there, renaming it to clouds two. And for these clouds, I want them to be white. I don't want them to blend with the sky too much, so I'm going to just pick pure white. But if you wanted to stick with the color you use in the sky, you could definitely do that as well. And once more, feel free to draw any kind of cloud shape you want. I like to draw clouds that have a pretty flat bottom and then kind of the traditional cloud shape at the top. And just like for the clouds in the background, you might want to just play with the opacity so that these kind of blend a little bit better. Maybe around, you know, high 80s or low 90s, just so you can see the mountains through a little bit and so that the clouds blend in the environment a little bit better too. Great. So now we're going to start shaping the mountains a little bit so they don't look quite as flat. And we're going to do that just by adding lights on one of the face. So in my case, again, the sun is kind of coming from here. So all the right sides of the mountain is where I'm going to add light. Now, no matter which side your light is on, we're all going to use the same technique to add it. So we're going to create a new layer, making sure it is above any mountain layer you have, but below the promontory. And we're going to rename this layer to light. And here you could go ahead and color pick the color of your mountain, make it lighter, and then just kind of paint like that. But I personally want to have a bit of a more dramatic effect with a light that has a color to it. And to make sure this color adapts with the different mountains we have, because the mountains all have different colors, we're going to apply this light layer as a blending mode as well. And here we're going to use a blending mode called Add. Now Add is right here in the list in Procreate, but it is really, really strong. So we're going to also lower the opacity for now around, you know, 40% or something like that. We're going to start painting and then we're going to adjust it as we go. Now the color I'm personally going to use for my light is a more intense version of the color I use in the sky. So the sky color was this super bright yellow here. The color I'm going to use for the light itself is just yeah, a more saturated version of that. And the color palette, it is this one right here. But you could pick again any color of your choice. And here in terms of brushes, you have a few different options depending on the style you want your background to be in. I like mine to be a bit more painterly, so as you can see, it's not super precise. There's a bunch of texture and it's a little bit, yeah, painterly. So if that's the vibe you want as well, you have a few different options. If you're working with Procreate, you could pick in the charcoal pack the Willow Charcoal. If you're working in a different software, you could just try to find a brush that has charcoal in the name. That should be a pretty good option. If you are working with the inking pack or the inking stippling texture bundle, I should say, in the inking pack, you could pick the low ink marker. If you don't want much of a painterly style and you'd rather have everything be super crisp, you could just stick with whichever brush you've been working so far, so a base round brush or the ultra smooth tracing brush. And here all you have to do is start sculpting your mountains. So you can decide where you want the mountain ridge to be. Let's say I go with this mountain here. Maybe I want it to kind of cut here, like that, roughly. And then color in that side of the mountain that is facing where your sun is. So in my case, again, it was on the right. So I'm just going to go over very loosely and paint that side of the mountain. And here, since we're drawing a valley, it is quite reasonable to think that maybe there's a mountain range here as well, where we kind of see the start here. And that means the sun would not be able to reach the bottom of these mountains. So just go ahead and focus the light on the top of the mountains. 
And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this final video, please go ahead and leave me a comment telling me which kind of mountain are you drawing? Are you drawing round mountains or spiky mountains? And if you're new on the channel, you might be a little bit confused with what this secret password thing is. Essentially, it's a game that we play in all the illustration videos. I hide a secret password for you to find. And it does a few things. One of them is, you know, it's just really fun for me because you know me, you see my face in the intro, in my voice throughout the entire video, but I have no idea who you are and whenever you leave a comment, I get to see sometimes your face, sometimes your name, and it's just, it's just really great for me to see who's part of the creative community that we're building here on the channel. But probably the most important thing about the secret password is that it does give me a lot of information to how to edit and paste my videos better. So the secret password essentially is a way for me to create better tutorials for you. So yeah, if you watched this far, just go ahead and leave me a comment with which kind of mountain you're painting, either round or spiky, and then we're going to keep going. And once you've mapped out everything, it might be a little bit easier to go back and play with the light layer opacity just to see what kind of light intensity you want. For now, I'm going to set mine around 50%, but that is also something we can go back and play with as we keep adding stuff. So the next thing we might want to add is any kind of either grass or sand or rock bottom around the river. So for that, go ahead and create a new layer above the closest mountain range to use, in my case, Mountain 4 and rename it to either grass or sand, whatever you're painting. Now, since we want this grass or sand or whatever to stay within the shape of the mountain range that we already painted, we're going to apply the grass layer as a clipping mask onto the mountain range. Now to do that in Procreate, all you have to do is tap on the layer and then select clipping mask from the menu. Clipping masks are available in most software. If you don't have any in your software, it's really not a big deal. You're just going to need to be a little bit more careful when you paint your grass or your sand or whatever to stay within the lines roughly. So clipping mask is just a way to save time, but it's really not essential. And here you can pick any color of a choice, again, depending on what you want to have in the bottom of the valley. I'm going to go with just some grass. So in the color palette, it's this green right here. As you can see, pretty much middle of the way in terms of saturation as well as brightness, maybe a little bit more bright than dark. And with the same brush you use to paint your light, you're just going to paint your grass. And don't hesitate to go back with an eraser to just change the shape if you went too far like I did. And here I recommend just setting your eraser to any kind of soft brush you have. So just a regular round brush without any texture but with some feathering on the edges. It's just so you have a little bit more control over your erasing and you don't just erase a super sharp line. Now, if you want, you can also add details on the mountains themselves, depending on the kind of mountain you have. And you can also refine the shape of the mountain. For example, I feel like this one is really flat because in theory, we don't see the part that would be in the light. We just see the part in the shadow, which means right now it's super flat. So before we move on to the trees and the atmosphere, we're going to just refine the mountains a little bit. So maybe adding snow and just kind of sculpting them a bit more. Now to sculpt them some more, you're just going to go through all the different layers you have for the mountains, pick the color you use for that mountain and make it slightly darker so that you can then just go over and brush any kind of detailing you want. Now, if you're working in a software that has a feature called alpha lock, that would be a great thing to activate right now. So in Procreate to activate it, again, just tap on the layer and select alpha lock in the menu. 
And when you activate alpha lock on a layer, it means everything you paint on that layer is going to stay within the shape that was already there. So once more, kind of like a cooling mask, it's just a way to save some time because you don't have to worry about staying within the line of the mountain. But if your software doesn't have alpha lock, really not a big deal. Again, just be a little bit more careful when you are working towards the edges. But otherwise, we're all going to do the same thing, which is just adding a bit more texture to the mountains, especially the ones that are not in the light. And just making sure you remember to change between the different layers. So once you're done with the first range, just activating alpha lock on the second range, then picking a darker version of that color and just kind of going and repeating the steps. And if you're working in Procreate, just a tip for you, you can also activate alpha lock by just swiping your layer towards the right with two finger, or again, just going in the menu. And if you want, you can also add some snow on top of your mountains. So for that, you can just pick a nice white and going through all the different mountains that you have to add a bit of snow towards the top. And here I recommend not pressing super hard with your pencil, otherwise it's going to look really, really white. So making sure you're kind of gentle when you're brushing in the snow. It's mostly just to add texture and kind of break up the shape. We don't want the snow to be super, super intense. So feel free to pause the video here to take all the time you need to sculpt your mountains, add snow if you want. Uh, if you don't want to add snow, you could add kind of green for trees towards the top, something like that. Just kind of experiment with how you can break up the shape. And once you're done with that, we're going to move on to adding some atmosphere and then finishing up with some details. Now adding kind of atmosphere is really super easy, but it makes a massive difference. Now to add atmosphere, all we have to do is create layers between the different mountain ranges we have and add this kind of cloudy, misty gradient. So we're going to start with the back. So creating a new layer right above mountain ones, and we're going to rename this layer to atmosphere. Now for the atmosphere, you're going to pick the same color you used for the lighter part of your sky. So in the color palette, if we remember, in my case, it was this super bright kind of yellow orange right here. And you're just going to paint with that color on the bottom section of the mountain. And just like we did for the sky, we're going to apply Gaussian Blur. So again, if you're working in Procreate in the adjustment panel here, Gaussian Blur. And then we're going to add a lot of blur. We really want this to be super, super soft. There we go. 
You can see it's really, really subtle, but if we add this atmosphere between all the mountains, it's going to create the illusion of depth and it's going to make the piece feel just so much more mystical and interesting. So again, just a new layer, this time right above Mountains 2. We're going to rename it to Atmosphere as well. And same thing, we're just going to brush over the mountain. Adding a lot of Gaussian Blur. So go ahead and add atmosphere between all the different mountain ranges, making sure you don't add any in front of the front range you have. So in my case, I'm just going to add one more between mountain three and mountain four, and then we're going to paint some trees. Next, we're going to add some trees, so for that go ahead and create a new layer above pretty much everything except for the promontory because the promontory is really in the foreground. So a new layer and rename it to trees. Now here, depending on the season, you could have different colored trees, depending on the trees as well. I'm going for evergreens, so I'm just going to pick a nice dark green in the color palette. It's this one right here. You can see super dark and pretty desaturated too. And at this stage, you could go in and just kind of paint, you know, a tree range. It's not really about seeing the individual trees as much as just seeing that there's kind of a forest there at the bottom. So you could totally do that just with the same brush that we've been using for all the elements we just drew. Or if you want to be a little bit quicker, you can download my free tree brush. It will be linked in the description below. And again, it's totally free. And once you install it, it should be in your imported section here at the bottom. You can see it's going to look a little bit like this. And with this brush, you can just kind of go over and paint some trees really, really quickly. Now, the size of the brush you're going to have to play with as well. But once you have it, you can go over and paint hundreds of trees in just one stroke. And you can just kind of tap to add individual trees as well, if, if that's what you prefer. So just go ahead and add trees wherever you want. I'm going to add them on both sides in front of the first mountain range. And if you want, you could also add them between the different ranges. So I'm going to add more trees between my first range and my second range. So it is going to be right here above mountain tree, but below the atmosphere so that the atmosphere is actually in front of the trees. We're going to rename it to trees as well. And just like for the mountains, if you're adding trees that go further down the back, Make sure that you make your color progressively lighter and less saturated, so more gray and more white. Make sure that you also make your brush smaller so that the trees are smaller, but otherwise, very easy. You can just go and add as many or as little trees as you want by just brushing here and there. Now, if you're using my free tree brush, you're going to see the, like the tree line, the bottom line is going to look a little bit weird. So what I recommend doing is just going back on all the different tree layers you might have and with your eraser set to the soft brush. Just kind of erasing that line a little bit. And that way you're essentially mimicking kind of the atmosphere we have in the back mountains, but on the trees. So that should be pretty nice. Now you don't have to do this, but I feel it's a good way to have the trees blending the back a little bit more. Now at this stage, if you wanted, if this was not a background for you, if this was actually the artwork, you might want to go back in and add some more details. So maybe even outlines on some of the trees, maybe little rocks um, here and there, maybe adding a bit more details in the mountains themselves. You could go back in and really refine the piece using the same technique, but just a little bit more precise. So a smaller brush, taking the time to really do everything super precisely. But if you're using this as a background, you really don't need to be more precise than this. And actually you probably don't want to be any more precise than this because you don't want to distract 
or you don't want the background to distract from the main element. So the main element, whether it is a character standing on the promontory like I kind of have sketched out in my example, this element is what should be the most detailed. So this is where you would add outlines and textures and stuff like that. So this is the reason I believe a really painterly style like this works great for background because it is much quicker and it doesn't take away from any kind of piece of interest that you might have in the foreground. But before you're done with the background, before you move on to any kind of other element you might want to add, we're going to just add a bit more light effect in this piece. So just go ahead and create a new layer below the closest mountain range. So in my case, below mountain four. So it doesn't affect the section of the piece that is in the front, more the section that is in the middle and the back. And we're going to rename this layer to uh, light effect. We're going to apply this layer as the blending mode overlay. And here you're going to pick a slightly different version of the light color you use. So in my case, all the lights are this kind of bright orange that I've used in the color palette. It was this one right here. So to make the piece more interesting, we're going to introduce this kind of second light color further down, further back, which is also going to help us have a bit more depth in the piece. So in the color palette, it is this one right here. As you can see, it's more of a salmon pink, but it is still pretty similar. I'm not going in with a blue or something like that. Think of it as like a cousin to your main light color. And then you can go back to whichever brush you want, really doesn't matter, as, as long as it's not the tree brush. It really doesn't matter, honestly, it could be a hard brush, a charcoal brush, whatever. I'm gonna go back to the low ink marker. And you're just going to paint this color in the same area where you have your gradient in the sky, but this time it's going to be in front of the mountains. And once you've painted that, just going in to add some Gaussian blur and then just blending it to the max so it really create a super soft gradient. As you can see, again, it is super quick to do, but it makes a big difference. It feels like the piece totally came to life with just that one little layer. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to paint a character to put in the foreground, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch of videos teaching you how to draw a body, a face, hands, everything you need to know in order to draw a cartoon. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.